Hey everyone, my name is Jordan with Main Deck, and today I have an unusual character who's quite capable in the right hands. Let's check it out. Hey guys, how's it going? Today I have a very interesting Aoyama deck. Uh, personally, I think he's a little going under the radar. His first character didn't do a ton, but today we're going to be building it on Aoyama 2. Uh, so let's just go ahead and hit the table. Um, I also built the deck around the card capabilities, a little bit of a spoiler for our foundations. I wanted to find a deck that could use capabilities to its fullest potential. Um, so um, I kind of built this. It's not fully fleshed out yet. This is draft one. I've only played one, maybe two games with it, so I don't have a ton of experience with the deck yet. But I just wanted to bring it to you guys anyway, because the few games that I did play were very fun. And it's very cool to find a deck that can use capabilities as much as possible and really get max value out of that huge boost for the cost of one momentum. Uh, so without further ado, let's just jump into it. We'll go over Aoyama's abilities. He's a seven-hander, 20 health. Uh, really helps you dig for the cards you need. A little, little bit weak on the health portion, but hopefully that won't matter when your opponent's being buried in large amounts of damage and speed. So, his first ability, enhance once per turn on your turn only. You can add one of your foundations from your card pool to your momentum, and your mid attack will get plus three damage. Um, this is part of the reason I think he's the probably the best user of capabilities right now in the game, because he has the ability to basically every turn, assuming you're playing your cards right and sculpting your hand properly, to have a momentum whenever you need it. And part of the reason it's harder to play capabilities is because you need a momentum when it's finally on the board. So we're going to run four copies of capabilities, a little bit jumping ahead here. but. So we should be able to get it on the field, and then Aoyama has an ability that allows you to gain a momentum basically whenever you need it. Um, and you might be thinking, well, why would I want to play a foundation before I play my attack? You won't always have to play the foundation. We have a handful of different ways to get things from your stage into the card pool to then target with this ability, and they generally give you some sort of benefit when you do so as well. So it's not always just going to be clogging up your card pool for no reason. Um, and on a small side note, when you fight some people that add stuff to your card pool, then you'll just be able to kick it out with this. Either on defense, and um, sorry, you can't do it on defense, but on offense, it'll just give you some fuel. Um, they probably won't use the ability, but you might catch them off guard because not a lot of people play the character. Uh, the next enhance is lose one health, your mid attack gets plus one speed. Um, just a nice basic enhance, giving stuff more speed. We're going to have damage covered on most of our other effects, so having a little extra speed is sometimes makes all the difference. Uh, we also have quite an ability to untap most of our foundation, or ready our foundations, so we might be able to do some pretty long attack strings as well. So the plus one speed on every, you know, five attacks is going to add up. They're going to have to tap that extra... Uh, foundation in order to block you every single time and it'll just whittle them down until they just have to take the damage. So now we'll go over the attacks. Uh, normally we start with assets and actions but I didn't find any that I thought was super good enough to be included in main board out yet. Um, there might be some stuff in the future so right now we just have this package here. Starting with your attacks we got three copies of instant explosive release. Um, this is just a really cheap attack, and it's a Fury, which is important because capabilities... Um, actually, I'll go over capabilities first since we kind of built the deck around the character and capabilities. So we got capabilities, for those of you who don't know what it is. It's a 3 diff, 4 high block. Not the greatest block, but it's there. Um, 5 check, and it's enhance, commit, discard 1 momentum, and your Fury attack gets plus 2 speed and plus 5 damage. So things will be getting, you know, pretty, pretty high damage, pretty fast pretty quick and we just want more ability to do that and instant explosive release is a nice cheap uh, attack so you can play it near the end of the turn if you choose uh, after your opponent has expended all their blocks you can play this for pretty cheap and then pump it up and it'll be a beefy five high for eight without any other buffs which you know is a is a tough pill to swallow you know when you're mid game and they've already attacked you three or four times and you've probably taken partial damage from other stuff. It also has the added effect of being usable in the beginning of the turn as well uh, as your second attack. Uh, it enhances add this attack to your momentum after it resolves, only playable if your first attack dealt damage. 
We have a couple ways of having extra or pushing damage through with things like Electric Jolt. And one card that's in the side deck that I played around with using as well, because it's a throw, will mean you can basically guarantee that you're going to do damage and then play this as your second attack. Maybe buff it up with capabilities and then just stuff it in the momentum afterwards. Both clearing your card pool, making it easier to play more attacks and giving you another momentum to replenish that supply to use on either, you know, your Nitro Ignition Explosion or a capabilities if you have more than one in play or haven't used it yet. It is not a mid, so you won't be able to do any of the Aoyama, you know, shenanigans, but it'll do plenty of work on its own. It also has an ability of if this attack deals damage, your next attack gets plus two. So if this isn't the attack that you're going to pump up to high heaven, um, you know, it makes it hard to block because they know if you have capabilities and some momentum that eventually you're going to be unloading that big cannon. They probably won't want to block this if this is unbuffed. Like, who wants to stop a 3 speed, 3 damage attack that's just going to go to momentum most likely on most occasions uh, just to make it harder to stop something later? Um, so chances are this will deal damage. It's also a high, so there's just a random chance they just don't have a full block for it. And you get the plus 2 in the next attack. Moving on to three copies of Maneuvering Laser. We got a nice mid block here. Three mid for four. It's a mid attack, so all your Aoyama shenanigans are online on this bad boy. And it has the ability to add one card from your stage to your card pool. One of the ways we can cheat something in to make Aoyama's ability useful. And it'll give this attack plus one speed, plus two damage. It is not a Fury, but it does have EX2. So as you're stacking all this momentum, waiting for your capabilities, or maybe, you know, your bottleneck, because you only have one or two capabilities on the board, this will give you another way to kind of boost something with your momentum so it's not just sitting there doing nothing. Since we only ever need one momentum per activation of capabilities, you're free to use your extra momentum on stuff like Ignition Explosion or this EX here. Um, it also has the ability to, if it is not blocked, discard your rival's entire momentum. Um, sometimes that'll be relevant, sometimes it won't be. Sometimes it's just relevant enough to force them to block, so when you play your Fury attack afterwards, they just have to take the hit. Um, overall, good card, allows you to put something in your card pool, um, then immediately bounce it with his ability. Um, keep that in mind if you do end up using that enhance. It's going to get plus one speed, plus two damage, making it a four for six. And you're most likely only going to put that foundation in if you're going to use Aoyama and give it three more damage. So then that'll be a four speed for nine damage. And then you probably at this point are going to lose one health, give it plus one speed. Five speed for nine damage seems good. And if they don't stop it, you clear the momentum. On that note, it's also a great option for the EX, like I said, because nine damage is worth pushing through. Moving on, we got three copies of Electric Jolt. Uh, a little bit of stun here. Um, not too fast, but it is a mid, so you can buff it up with your mid stuff. It's a four diff, pretty good. It shores up our block line, giving us some high block access. And its other abilities are just relevant all around in most situations. We got in momentum, you can flip it to commit one rival foundation. You get to choose, of course, so that's always clutch. You, you know, most of the time you'll be turning off one of the most powerful things on the opponent's board. Uh, you can tap their wall clings if you think they're just going to wall cling you later. Or if they have some massive speed reduction, you just tap it. It also has EX2. Probably not the best target for it, but if you got that extra momentum, why not? And it also has the main reason that a lot of people run this. Uh, if this attack is completely blocked, it still deals one damage. Uh, this will allow you to make sure you get momentum. It also turns on instant explosive release if this is your opener. Um, being stunned, it'll probably be a great opener. And then when it goes by momentum, you have that extra ability. Um, keep in mind, it's just a flip in momentum too. So you'll get to commit something and then spend the momentum on your capabilities. A little bit of a, you know, double dip in there. The next one, we got three copies of Nitro Explosion Ignition. This one is a four diff. Again, we want to do a little bit cheaper attacks here so we can do longer strings. It's a Fury, so it's a great target for your capabilities if it's out there. It's a base speed of already five, so if you capabilities this bad boy, that's a seven speed for nine without any other buffing. Uh, pretty, pretty beefy. And of course, as everyone knows, it's got its two great abilities here. Response card pool after a Fury attack leaves the card pool during the combat phase. Add it to the top of your or add the top of your deck to your momentum. The only time that'll probably really do much is when you have an instant explosive release. So, you know, you open with this, it deals damage. Instant explosive release, it leaves the card pool. You can then use, you know, this response to add a second momentum just to add a little extra, you know, power to the rest of your kit. 
And then this is going to be another way you can have a great momentum outlet for the rest of the game if you start really stacking it up and you don't have the capabilities on hand or your bottlenecked. Enhance in card pool, you remove it from the card pool, clearing it to make it easier to play stuff, and it gives your current attack powerful too, so you can boost it up even more whenever you do do that big final punch. Or even just smaller punches here and there when you got the extra momentum. All around, great addition. And it's a good mid block. We got Long Lasting Explosion on a 5. This is another great opener. It's a mid 5 for 6. Being a mid, it's very relevant because it means with Aoyama, if you have no other buffs and you, you know, have something in there to use it, you can make this pretty big. It's a Fury. It's a great candidate for capabilities, which is why we have 4 copies. And if you're not going to capabilities this or if you have multiple, it has if the next attack you play is a high, it gets speed. If it's a mid, it gets more damage. And of course, we play a lot of highs and mids, pretty much all of them. Um, this will get you value on your second attack no matter what it is, and it allows you to kind of pick and choose. Uh, part of the reason the other Furies, for the most part, are kind of high, not necessarily intentional, but it gives it speed, which means later you're going to want to capabilities it, and getting it through is important, so giving him speed is good, because you're already going to get 5 damage from capabilities, so you don't necessarily need the extra damage. Because, you know, giving 5 to any of these makes them 9 damage, or 9 or 8 damage attacks. And if they were just super fast, you're pretty much guaranteed to get that full 9 through, which is beefy. And it itself is a great target for capabilities. Uh, means the opening attack is just going to be a big stellar 7 speed for 11 damage if you have a capability on board. And it's a mid, so it stacks with Aoyama's abilities and foundation kit. So with just Aoyama himself, if you have a, uh, a foundation or a way to cheat a foundation into the field, with Long Lasting Explosion... You're looking at a 14 damage attack that's 8 speed plus whatever other abilities you have on board, which in and itself can sometimes just clear the game. Really good addition. Um, and sometimes you can also just kind of mind game your opponent. If you got a capabilities on field and you know that they're waiting for that, if they have one block, for example, uh, you could just use this enhance, not use anything on long lasting, make it look like you have some big attack coming up next. And then they just won't block it. And then this on its own has good stats. You're going to hit them for six, maybe seven or eight if you do some minor enhances. And they just won't stop it because they're afraid that a capabilities fury attack is on the way. And then you just don't attack again and build. Very valid strategy. Next we got Signature Right Swing, shores up our low block line, allows us to filter our hand with enhanced discard two cards and draw two cards. Of course it's a cheaper attack on the f with a four diff, and it's a Fury, which means it's a, it's a great candidate for our capabilities. Moving right along, we'll go to our Foundation lineup. We got one copy of Aiming for number one. Uh, most of the time if a character can run this card, I run at least one. It's relevant in almost any matchup. It is a 3 diff. It's not super clutch or important to the build, uh, but it's nice to have on the field when you do. So I, that's why I got one copy in here. The next one is Aoyama's special foundation from the DLC kit. Is two or four copies of it. It's a 2 diff for 5 or 5 check. And the more important thing here is enhance, add this card to your card pool, a way to cheat in a foundation to use Aoyama's ability, and your mid attack gets plus 2 speed. So that means if you have this on the field, you get two speed from this if it's a mid, you'll get one extra speed for losing a health with Aoyama, and then you get the three damage from adding it to momentum. Then you have a momentum, so if you have a capabilities, if you have something like Long Lasting Explosion, that's now at plus five, plus eight, and that is a 10 speed for 14 damage, which is insane for an opening attack. Like. Some people are going to have a hard time blocking. Even if they go to deadlock, blocking a 10 speed attack, they're going to feel that. They're going to have to commit, you know, a big portion of their board if they have it all on, you know, at the ready. Which deadlock people generally rely on the fact that they can block like, you know, a million times. But if they're going to have to tap six to seven things just to block one attack and you do it more than once even, whew, it's going to be great. So we got four copies of that, of course. It also has a response on it. Uh, you can flip it. After this card is committed due to a rival effect, the rival will discard one found or one 
momentum, sorry, not a foundation. Uh, and it's playable while committed, of course. And uh, that's something that'll come into you know effect sometimes. There are some characters where having their momentum is very important. You can get rid of it. If Ochako are doing you know meteor storm loops or they're gonna tap something crazy or you know just anything, it's nice to have the option to have that extra ability to get rid of their momentum. The next one, of course, four copies of capabilities. We already went over it, so we'll just glaze on through. And we have four copies of Amphibious. Um, it's a great spam foundation that allows you, when something leaves the card pool this turn, to ready this foundation, playable while committed. Our main character ability is going to most likely be taking something from the card pool. We also have Instant Explosive Release and Nitro Explosion. We have plenty of ways to get stuff out of the card pool, so this will be live most of the time, if not all of the time. We got three copies of Release, Great Spam Foundation. Unfortunately, it's a four check, but it's, it's it would be busted if it wasn't. It allows you to destroy one foundation, and your check to block gets plus two, uh, making you a great defensive option. Uh, sometimes things are tapped out, you have flipped foundations, you don't really care if they get blown up, you have better stuff to play later. It helps you stay out of deadlock if that's what you're going for, and it's a high block as well. So no matter where it's at, it's generally good unless it's being checked, but uh, yeah, it's worth a check. Next one we got three copies of First Impressions. Flip, if this is your first attack this combat, it gets plus three damage, and if it's blocked, your next attack gets plus three speed. Great card. I've even thinking about kicking this up to four because it has a low block as well and we're a little bit shy on low blocks in this deck. But no matter what you do in this, it's great. You pump the damage on something, again, like Long Lasting Explosion if you're going off first attack. Make this thing huge. And really anything. Uh, giving stuff plus three damage, that pushes all these attacks to seven damage or, you know, six on this or higher. That makes it a little more threatening. People are going to want to block it. And if they do block it, that gives you speed to the next attack, which is most likely going to be a capabilities attack. Making that capabilities attack faster makes it even harder to stop that huge packet of damage you'll be sending. Uh, and again, sometimes maybe even they just won't block it because they don't want you to get that speed and they'll just take the extra three damage. And then you can just stop your turn and be like, okay, yeah, you took the damage. Cool. I don't have another attack. Um, no matter where you slice it, getting three damage in it through or getting the next attack plus three speed is pretty good we got four copies of small and limber all of our attacks are charges and or theories so you're always going to be able to commit and get plus one speed plus one damage uh, it's once per turn allows you after a card leaves the stage during combat to ready the foundation and it's playable while committed of course this allows you to double dip on this um, or use it to pay for stuff or just ready it up when you need it for defense and like i said since we're going to be taking stuff from our car or our stage into the card pool or destroying stuff with release we have plenty of ways of making that response and getting the most out of this card and giving something plus one plus one is great especially when we're already seeing you know 10 speed large attacks just make it even better or just shoring up your smaller attacks to make them a little more threatening as well Two copies of First Day of Class. This one will just help us with our checks a little bit and just kind of give us more resources when we have those long turns. So it has response flip. After this card is committed during the enhanced step, you ready it, playable while committed. And then of course commit. If this is the first attack you've played this turn, the next check to play an attack gets plus two. It also is really good in here because if you don't have a way to cheat in a foundation on your turn, you can use this because it specifically just says the check to play an attack, not the check to play your next card. So you can attack with this, or attack with something, commit this, give your next attack plus two, play a foundation, then play your attack, and that's at plus two, so it's just at base cost. It's as if there's nothing in your card pool at that moment. So that gives you an extra leeway to make sure you can get a foundation in there if you don't have one or don't have a way to put one in. Um, just gives you a little more options there. And of course, it's also a low block. The next one, we got three copies of Wall Cling. Um, if everyone knows what this card does, and if you don't, flip. If the attack is blocked, it deals no damage. Uh, it's perfect for stopping throws. It's great if, uh, especially for this deck, I've thought about pointing us with a, up to four, just because we are a little weak in the low block and our high blocks aren't super high either, but we have a ton of great mid blocks. Uh, having more wall clings would make sure that we don't necessarily care that we have a low amount of low blocks and an okay amount of high blocks because mid blocks will be able to block anything for no damage. 
The next one we got two copies of Specialist of Sound. Again, it's a low block. It's a great foundation. If it's checked, it allows you to check your next check or see if it's a card you want to draw, if you have some way to draw. Um, it also is great on defense. Whenever they play the attack, you commit it and it gives it minus three speed. Great all around card. Next one, we got three copies of Arrogant Disposition. This one shores up our low block line. It's a great spam. More importantly, it's a six check and its ability is relevant 50% of the time as a lot of attacks in the game are punches, especially when, you know, some of the top decks right now are your Kirishimas, your All Mites, stuff like that. They're going to be running punches and this allows you to commit it. This punch tech gets minus three, helping out with that defense. And last but not least, we got four copies of Requesting Assistance. This one is flip. If you have one or more momentum, ready this or ready a foundation that has not been ready this combat phase. And this is important because we can ready our capabilities with this. And of course, we have plenty of ways to generate snap momentum, or at least always have a supply of momentum, meaning we can always ready something with this. So all around it just gives great, great duty here. Great spam foundation, great effect just all around and particularly great if you only have a few capabilities or even if you have all four down and you just want to reuse them um it's it's just all around does work in the deck and that actually wraps up our aoyama our yuga aoyama 2 deck list uh with capabilities as the the main star here as you can see here i have my side deck we're not going to go over these in this video um, i have them here so everyone can kind of see which cards i was maybe playing around with or considering being in the deck for one reason or another if you want to have a better insight as to why i chose those cards as a potential for being in the main deck you can go ahead and check out our Patreon. This is where that will go up. I'll have my cards to be considered and why I considered them video there, which will go over those 10 cards in great detail. Uh, I believe it's as low as $2 a month. You'll gain access to our Patreon. There's a bunch of cool things you can get. You get, you know, some extra stuff, a special channel in Discord. And just in general, there's cool things. And of course, you get to support us and we love you for it. Speaking of that, we like to thank all our awesome patrons who are already patrons. Thank you very much for your support. It helps us do what we do best. And uh, we hope you had a grand time here. I mentioned the Discord. Go ahead and check it out. Links to everything will be in the bottom there in addition to the link to this uh, deck list. Uh, in our Discord, we have, uh, what are they called? Leagues going on each month. Sorry, bunch of stuff to say here. Uh, the league goes, I think we have a league going every month. Uh, we have one for My Hero. We have some for Final Fantasy. We have some for, you know, almost, we're hoping to get one going for each major game that we cover. Uh, we have prizes for those as well, and they're completely free to enter. Very casual format. You play when you can on the week, and you record your matches. It's all very cool, and we hope to see you there. Thank you guys for your time, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your days. Take care.